Okay, welcome to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. In this video, I'm going to go through question number two from the International A-Level Pure Mathematics P2 Edexcel January 2020 paper. Okay, um, this is an international A-Level and um, not to be confused with the UK A-Level. The paper two, the P2, is an AS-Level paper in the international A-Level. Now, there's one of the terms in the binomial expansion of 3 plus ax all to the power of 6, where a is a constant, is 540x to the power of 4. Find the possible values of a. Okay, so basically what they're telling us is that when we expand this and we get to the x to the power of 4 term, then the coefficient of x to the power of 4 is going to be 540. And they're asking us to find what value of a would have to be here for that to happen. So when we expand something like 3 plus ax to the power of 6, where we have a positive power as an integer, which is all we're going to deal with in P2, then you know the simplest method of, of uh, expanding something like this is to use the NCR method. And we normally expand it up to a certain number of terms, and we start off by having this bracket for NCR. And it's always the power, the, the power here that goes on, to, on the top, and then this number starts to increase slowly. And you have the two terms, which are 3 in this case, and a to the power of x in this case. If there's a negative here, you'd put the here as well. And then slowly these powers would, if, if they sit in ascending powers of x, you would then start with 0 here and 6 there, because they have to add up to 6. And then you'd go up slowly here. This would go down, this would go up, this would go down to 5, then this would be 1. And here you'd write a 1 here, or a 5 here if you want, same thing. Okay, you'll understand why in a minute. Um, and then you put a 4, and then a 2, and then a 3, and then a 3, and then a 2, and then a 4, and so on. You keep going until you've got all the terms you need. Okay, so what we need in this particular case is for the x term to be raised to the power of 4. So this bracket has to have a power of 4 in it for us to end up with x to the power of 4, which means that this bracket has to have a power of 2, because these two always add up to this number here in the top of the NCR. Now, down here, we could put 4, or we could even put 2. It doesn't matter. They'll give you the same thing. Okay, because this is based on basically getting the coefficient from Pascal's triangle. And because it's symmetrical, if you're in the same position to the left of the center or the right of the center, you'll get the same um, number. So, for example, if you remember Pascal's triangle, it starts off like this. You have ones on the outside, and then these two add up to this number, these two add up to that number, and then these two add up to 4, and then 6, and then 4, and then 1, and it carries on like that, 1, and 5, and 10, and 10, and 5, and 1. So you can see that symmetrical, like this number and that number are the same, and they're both the same distance from the center. This number and that number are the same, and they're both the same distance from the center. So basically... Uh, the NCR tells you the coefficient in that particular place. So that would be for the sixth row. Okay, so basically here, you know, you'd have, um, that would be for, yeah. So basically, you know, if you have C, uh, 6C4 and 6C2, it will give you exactly the same answer. Okay, and I'll show you on the calculator in a minute how that works. Okay, so now I know that this will give me the x to the power of 4 term. So that's going to equal to 540, 540 x to the power of 4. Okay, so when I, ex when I expand this, then this is going to be 540 x to the power of 4. So let's compare the x to the power of 4 terms. So we're going to put this in our calculator. C, C, 6, and C, the, the, the button for C, which is for combination, is called 6, C, um, 4 gives us 15. So that's 15 times 3 squared is 9 times this is going to be a to the power 4 times x to the power 4. Well, we don't need the x to the power 4 because I'm just comparing the x squared, uh, the x to the power 4, sorry. So I don't need to write it there. That's equal to 540. I'm just comparing the coefficients of x squared, x to the power 4, sorry. Okay, so I don't have to write x to the power 4 here. All right, so we get 15 times 9. Uh, which is going to be uh, 90 plus 45, 135. 135, a to the power of 4 equals 540. And then we divide both sides by 135. 
So a to the power 4 equals 540 divided by 135. So a to the power 4 is equal to so you have 540 divided by 135, which gives us 4. So a to the power 4 equals 4. Now, if you want to find what the value of a is, we got to take the fourth root of 4. Okay, so this is one way of doing it. So a is equal to the fourth root of 4. But whenever you take the root of like an even root of anything, the answer could be positive or negative. So you're going to have the fourth root, the po positive plus or minus a fourth root of 4 for a. Okay, so now... How are we going to write that? How are we going to simplify that? We can simplify it. Okay, you could, I guess, put this in your calculator. And if you were to put this in your calculator, okay, you would get the, the fourth root. So you have to choose this button over here. This is the, the root. So you've got to choose the number. So the fourth root of four. And it will give you a decimal value which is 1.41 1 1.4123SF. 1 so a is equal to 1.41. A equals 1.41 but plus or minus 1.41. Um, that's to 3SF. Now, the question does not say um, leave your answer in exact form. It just says find the possible values of A. So in the mark scheme, both of these are actually acceptable. Okay. However, what would be best for you to do is to actually simplify this even further or in a, in, a, in a better way. So if we take this, there's different ways we could do it. We could say this is equal to plus or minus the fourth root okay, of 4. What we can do is we can change this into index format, index form. So this is like 4 to the power of a quarter. Okay, now... We know that 4 is the same as 2 squared. So that's 2 squared to the power of a quarter. So a is equal to plus or minus. Now 2 times a quarter is a half, using the index laws, so that's a half. So 2 to the power of a half is actually equal to the square root of 2. So this is plus or minus the square root of 2. And there's your answer for that part of the question. Okay, alternatively, another way you could have carried on. So actually, this in the mark scheme, this is acceptable, and this is acceptable, and this is acceptable. Another way of coming to this answer would be to say, okay, a to the power 4 minus 4 is equal to 0. So we can use here a difference of squares. This is like a difference of squares. They're both perfect squares. a to the power 4, its square root is a squared. So you write a squared and you write a squared. One bracket has a plus, the other one has a minus, and the square root of 4 is 2. So you end up with a squared plus 2 equals 0, and a squared minus 2 equals, equals 0. Now, if a squared plus 2 equals 0, then a squared is equal to negative 2, and a is equal to the square root of negative 2, which is not possible, it's undefined. So we can't get any solutions from this. However, when a squared minus 2 is equal to 0, then a squared is equal to 2, and a is therefore equal to plus or minus the square root of 2, which is the answer. Okay, so there's three, four different formats you can write the answer in, or three different formats you can write the answer in, and you can come across the answer in different ways. All of them are perfectly fine. Okay, so that's, that's how you answer 2a. Because it doesn't say find the, the exact possible values of a, therefore you can't, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you put in decimal point in, in 3sf, that's fine. Okay, although I think it's better to leave it in this form. And the other clue, for, for example, you took the fourth root, your calculator will just give you, you know, uh, basically a, a one positive value. It will be plus or my, plus, sorry, 1.41. So you've got to understand when you take an even root of any uh, number, you can basically, any number that can be, uh, any positive number, basically, any uh, number greater than zero, any positive number, when you take the fourth root of that, the answer will always either be positive or negative depending on the context of the question. It's possible for it to be negative. Okay, so whenever you have the fourth root or the sixth root or the eighth root, any even number on the root, the final answer could either be positive or negative. For example, uh, you know that uh, 16 is a result of 
2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And it's also the result of minus 2 times minus 2 times minus 2 times minus 2. The pairs of, ne of negatives cancel out. So you're left with the same answer. So that means the square, the fourth root of 16 is plus or minus 2. Okay, so that's a different, that's not the question we're asking. I'm just illustrating for you the concept. Okay, so there's part A answered. Now we're going to go on to part B. Okay, part B says, hence find the term independent of x in the expansion of. Okay, so we found that A is equal to the plus or minus the square root of 2. So we got to find the term independent of x in the expansion of this. Now, the term independent of x means it has no need for x. So it's basically going to be the term which is a constant term. Now, when you expand these two brackets, okay, you expand this, that 3 is going to be raised to the power of 6. Okay, the first term in this expansion is going to be 6, 0, and then you're going to have um, 3 to the power of 6, and you're going to have ax to the power of 0. So that will leave you basically with 1 times 3 to the power of 6. So that will leave you with 3 to the power of 6. So you have one of the constant terms, which doesn't have an x with it, will therefore be when you multiply 1 over 81 by the first term of this expansion, which would be 1 over 81 times this, which of course 6c0 gives you 1, eight, ax to the power of 0 gives you 1, so it's 1 over 81 times 3 to the power of 6, which is the same as 1 over 81 times 3 to the power of 4 times 3 squared, 3 to the power of 4 is 81, they cancel, so you're left with 9. Okay, so that's one of the constant, that's one part of the constant term. The other constant term will be when this is multiplied by the x to the power of 6 term. When this is multiplied by the x to the power of 6 term, the x to the power of 6 will cancel. So let's, cons let's consider the x to the power of 6 term. Okay, so you have 1 over x to the power of 6 multiplied by, then the, the x to the power of 6 term is going to be 6 and 6. Okay, so you got to the final term in ascending powers. And this is going to be a 6 here, and that will be ax to the power of 6. And this will be a 0 here with the 3. So this is going to give you 1. This is going to give you 1. And you will end up here with basically a to the power of 6 times x to the power of 6 over a to the power of 6. And they'll cancel out, leaving you a to the power of 6. And that is a term independent of x. And we know from the first part of the question, a is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2. So if you substitute a to the power of 6 for plus or minus the square root of 2, whichever, whatever happens to it, if it's positive or negative, the answer is going to come out as positive because you're raising it to an even power. So it's going to be root 2 to the power of 6. Now, how would I simplify that? You could put that in your calculator, but if you write it in an index form, it's, it's probably better for you. That's like 2 to the power of a half raised to the power of 6, which is 2 to the power of 3, which gives you 8. So therefore, your constant term, your constant, your term, which is independent of x, independent of x will be from here your 9 and from here your 8 will be 9 plus 8 which is going to be 17 that will be the constant term independent of x in the expansion of of this so we're looking for the constant terms the terms that don't have any x terms in them any x value the x's you, you have zero you basically have just no x's in there so 1 over 81 times 3 to the power of 6 basically will be one term which gives you 9 because 3 to the power of 6 can split up into 81 times 9. Okay, and the the other term is where this 1 over 6 and this, you know, 8 to the power of 6, they cancel, the x's cancel out. So you've got to, you've got to work out what that term is at the end and you've got to cancel out the x's. And the term in the end is going to be 8 to the power of 6 times x to the power of 6 times 1 over x to the power of 6. x to the power of 6 cancel. And you're left with a to the power of 6 to the, uh, times x to the power of 6 like here. And then you can, ca you can then continue. Okay, so there's the answer for part B. I hope that was clear for everybody. 
and um, I'll see you again sometime. If you would like to look at the playlist from, for the paper that this question was taken from, you can click in this area over here. If you'd like to look at the playlist for binomial expansion from P2, you can click over here. If you want to subscribe for the channel, you can subscribe by clicking on this button over here. Um, thank you for watching and see you again soon.